Welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to go over the grabbable component. The grabbable component is quite simple on the surface, but there are some uh, advanced sort of settings and tips that might not be clear that I wanted to go over. So feel free to skip this one if you're really familiar with the grabbable component. But if not, let's get started. I'll come over here into smooth POV, and I'm going to talk about how grabbable works. So the easiest way to demonstrate this is to grab your developer tooltip, open it up, and do create new 3D model box, and you'll get a box. It starts with this kind of green effect on it. Um, to get rid of that, just select it with the DevTool tip secondary and then deselect it with the deselect all option. Now it doesn't have that. Now each of those 3D models from that menu we were just in starts with a grab button on it, which means that with my laser, I can point it here, it'll turn red, and I can push the grab button and move it around. You'll see I can't really rotate it. We'll run that in a little bit. Um, additionally, I can also grab it with my actual hand and I can walk up to it and grab it and then I can rotate it. With the laser I can also rotate it in one direction using the joystick. I can also send it away and bring it back using the joystick. If we take a look at the cube here by inspecting it, you'll see there's a grabbable component here. For the rest of the components, see my tutorial on um, how to build a cube from scratch, which talks about how the rest of these work. We're just going to be concentrating on grabbable right now. Under grabbable, you'll see some uh, standard properties, and um, they have actually good effects on this one. For example, here on uh, enabled, if I am, if the cube is enabled, I can grab it, and if I unenable the enabled field, I now can't grab it. Oops. And if I re-enable it again, I can. I'm going to skip over reparent on release and preserve user space because I have a demonstration for that over there that I'll talk about in a moment. This is a bit of a more advanced concept. Uh, for destroy on release here, what this will do is actually destroy it on the release. So what I'm going to do here is duplicate the cube so I've got another one. I'm going to enable destroy on release and I'm going to pick up this cube and let go and you'll see it vanishes. And so here's our second cube to carry on. Beneath that, we've got an interesting option, which I just found out on my uh, day before yesterday, called Should Preserve Up. When this is disabled, the cube is a lot more manipulatable. You can see now I can rotate it using the laser, and uh, I can drag it around, and where I grab it matters, so I can kind of rotate it a little bit more freely. But with this off, sorry, on, it then behaves like normal. In most cases, you won't really notice this change until you play with an object for a lot. So I encourage you to open up a cube, turn off, should preserve up, and play with it. Try and think of when this might be useful. Um, it feels more gamey to play with an object like this, uh, and it feels more sort of edity or tactical or technical to play with an object like this. That's the option. Grab priorities are an interesting concept which allows you to um, control how much priority the uh, object should have when you try and grab it. As an example here, if I make a duplicate of the cube and then I move this one to the side here and then I change the grab priority of this one here to higher, so five, and now I go up to the object and I use my hand to grab it, I will grab the one with the higher priority here, even though there are two grabbables within range here. So I'm always grabbing the right cube and not the left cube. If I change this grab priority back down to zero and grab, you'll see I grab both. Grab priorities are great for things like objects on a shelf or um, levers or control panels or things like that. When you want um, certain things to have different priorities over each other, like a, a lever might have a higher priority over picking up the device, for example. Beneath grab priority is grab priority when checked. If you enable this option, you can change the grab priority once it's uh, grabbed. So you could have a higher or lower priority when it's grabbed. Edit mode only talks about edit mode. Um, for example, if I change, actually, let's get rid of this cube. Now I don't need to. Now that this is on edit mode only, you'll see I can't grab this. But if I go into edit mode, which is session edit mode, you'll then see my lasers and my grab area here. I can grab it because it's edit mode only as checked. That's useful for an object which um, is more sort of a technical object that's only designed for edit mode. So say like an obstacle that normally a player would have to get around or go over. In edit mode you might well just sort of move it out of the way. Let me turn off edit mode again. We'll go on to the next one. Um, allow steal will allow other users to pick it up when you have it in your hand. I can't demonstrate that right now, but uh, turn it on and it means you can kind of pass it around. 
Next one is drop on disable. What this means is if I'm holding the cube, hold on, uh, I don't know what I need on, there we go. So I'm holding the cube and I disable the grabber ball, it will let go of it and freeze it. But if I turn off drop on disable, I re-enable it, I pick it up and then I let go, of, uh, I turn off grabbable. You can see I'm still holding it, but when I let go, it will then become ungrabbable. So it's like final resting point whenever you let go in that case. I always like to keep drop and disable on, but there are terms where you might want to turn it off. Next to that is uh, active user filter. Just to explain active users, active users is a concept whereby um, if this object is parented to something, so if it's parented to say me, then the active user would be me. So it's basically the user the object is parented to. So uh, this tool, its active user is me because I'm holding it. If I put it in the world, the active user is null. If I hold it, the active user is me. So with the active user filter here, you can say disabled only active user, which means only the user that uh, is parented to it uh, is able to grab it. So in this case, if I set it on this tooltip, only I would be able to pick it up from this tool shelf. Active user when present, that's very useful. What that means is if there is an active user present, filter them. If there's not, then don't. For example, here, because it's parented to me via my tool shelf, and if I had this setting on, when I pick this up, still has an active user which means only I can grab it but if I put it down in the world there isn't an active user anymore so then anyone will be able to pick it up again. Exclude active user means I can't pick it up so if I were to put this on the tool shelf uh, tooltip I wouldn't be able to pick it up. Beneath that is a bit more um, explicit control over that you can use the only users list to control who can and can't pick up an object explicitly so if you add here you can actually drag and use it into that slot. So for example here if I go and inspect myself, I go up to the top, I find me, and then I can drag my user into here, and now only I can pick up this object, no one else can. And you can add as many of those as you want. Scalable controls if you can scale it. To scale an object that's grabbable, just grab it with two hands and bring them further apart or closer together and you'll see it scales. Physical means that it has to be done without a laser. So in this case, I can't pick up with the laser now, but I can go up to it and grab it. Beneath that is receivable. Now, receivable controls uh, if it's receivable on a grabbable receiver surface. I will go over grabbable receiver surfaces in another video, so uh, for now we'll just leave that one. That leaves the two that we skipped, and that's because they're kind of hard to explain, so I'm going to go over there and explain them. Those are reparent on release and preserve user space. So over here I have three copies of a box, each with a different setup on those two um, booleans. So over here we've got a box which is parented to this box parent, and you can see that by the name of box parent here, because this cube displays what it's parented to. Now this box has um, a grabbable set to not reparent on release, so reparent on release is set to null. What's going to happen here when I grab it? because it's not got reparent or release on. It will change a holder, which is like an object that represents me. Um, it's the like the cone here in this case. But when I let go, you'll see it bounces up to the root of the world. And that's because reparent on release isn't checked. If we move along, we have the exact same box here, but reparent on release is set to on. So when I pick this up, you'll see it says holder again. And then when I let go, it goes back to box parent. So it reparents it to the current parent when you let go. The holder back to box parent. So if you go up to the box parent here, you can see this cube, which is now on the root, isn't there, but this one isn't there when I'm holding it. When I let go, it goes back there. The next one uh, uses a concept called user space. Now, user space is basically where the user interacting with something is parented to. So you can see here for this entire tutorial, I've been parented to a slot called prime space, which has all the inspectors and boxes I made over there, but it also has this special box here which we're going to inspect as well. And this box has um, reparent on release checked and preserve user space checked. So right now when I pick it up and I drop it, it'll be parented to my space because it's got the reparent on release on. But now if I uncheck reparent on release, you might expect it to go to the root space. But because we're in a user space, as in prime space, it'll go back to prime space. So I pick it up, I let go, it says prime's user space, prime space. If I turn off preserve user space here, it'll bounce to the root. There you go. So it'll behave like uh, 
so it'll behave like this one, where it bounced up to the root. That's useful if you want an object to always stay within um, a slot that a user is on and not bounce up to the root. I recommend that one, especially in worlds where you don't parent them to the root, where you parent them to another slot, like all those guardian systems, etc., that exist, like the, the robot that Creator Jam uses or the big eye that Turk made. Those all have slots which users are parented under, and preserve user space is protecting grabbables from going up to the top there. And that's why both of these options are by default on. I hope that makes sense for these options. Do try it out. Um, it's a little bit difficult to kind of figure out. I will put this box so you can play with it in my tutorial folder so you can spawn it, play around with it, see um, where your object gets parented to. That's it for the grabbable. Um, there's a lot more here than you think, and so keep playing with them. Uh, the uh, stealing and the preserve up. They were kind of new to me until I took the time to research it for this video, so I didn't know that they existed, and now I do. I will see you next time. I hope that was helpful. See you later.